Mega constructions are a part of our world that's making our world more worthy and beautiful. Maybe skyscrapers that are reaching new record heights, huge tunnels that are establishing new transportation connections, or bridges that are covering greater distances than ever before. Gigantic infrastructure projects are started and completed around the world. So why not have a look at a few of them? So in this video, we are going to show you the biggest mega project world records. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Beijing Daxing International Airport Beijing Daxing International Airport is the biggest international airport in the world and the second airport serving Beijing. The new Daxing Airport serves as North China's commercial aviation hub. The airport is operated by Beijing Capital International Airport Co. The government of China announced the long-awaited approval for the construction of a new international airport in January 2013. The project is expected to cost $13.1 billion in total with construction work commenced in DEC 2014. The airport will have the capacity to handle 45 million passengers during the initial stages and 70 million passengers by 2025 with plans for expanding the facility into an airport capable of handling 100 million passengers. Beijing spent $3.5 billion to build what was the world's largest airport passenger terminal. However, China's National Planning Agency has given the go-ahead to a new airport that will cost nearly four times as much. Beijing International Airport's Terminal 3 was built just in time for the Beijing Olympics in March 2008. It is a sprawling 10.6 million square foot complex. Despite the major expansion, Beijing International Airport, Asia's busiest, has struggled to handle passengers, leading to delays that have become legendary among frequent travelers. Beijing Airport reached its design capacity in 2013 of 75 million. Gothard-based Tunnel Switzerland, measuring 57 kilometers in length, situated 2.3 kilometers deep under the Alps, and having cost 11 billion euros to complete, Switzerland's Gothard-based Tunnel is more than just the world's longest and most expensive tunneling project. With the construction of the Gothard Rail Link, Switzerland is creating transport history. The two base tunnels under the Gothard Pass and Monte Ceneri, hundreds of meters lower than existing alpine tunnels are not only a pioneering engineering achievement, but they also symbolize the materialization of a nation's will. At a time of rising nationalism and closing borders, European leaders will also hope it can serve as a reminder that the continent can still smash barriers when it manages to pull together. It is no coincidence that German Chancellor Angela Merkel, French President Francois Hollande, and Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi have found the time to join Swiss President Johann Schneider Ammann for Wednesday's maiden voyage through the rail tunnel, which contains a 152km labyrinth of galleries, cross passages, and shafts, and has taken 17 years to complete. Festivities with 1,200 invited guests, expected to cost about 8 million euros, will mark the opening of the rail tunnel, which will be mainly used for further test journeys until commencing regular service in December 2016. Once fully functional, the tunnel will not just slice 45 minutes off the journey time between Zurich and Lugano, but also form a central building block of the so-called Rheinalp Corridor that stretches from the seaports of Rotterdam and Amwerp via Germany's industrial heartland down to the port of Genoa in Italy. The new Gotthard-based tunnel, which has been in planning since the 1980s, will bypass the old Gotthardbahn rail tunnel, which rises and falls through the massive and a winding route. Unlike its predecessor, which was completed in 1882, the new line will run on a flat, low-level route, the first of its kind in the Alps. Before we move on, support us by hitting subscribe and the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. Now let's get back to our topic. Midtown Manhattan Airport The 990-acre Manhattan Airport was the brainchild of real estate mogul William Zeckendorf, who also owned the Chrysler Building and Astor Hotel. According to a 1946 Life article, Vav Tax Science, Zeckendorf's $3 billion project an astronomical sum today, let alone in the 1940s, would have stretched 144 blocks from 24th to 71st streets and 9th Ave to the Hudson River at 200 feet above street level. Dubbed New York City's Dream Airport, the megastructure would span the length of 144 Manhattan blocks with a 70-meter high deck roughly the size of Central Park. A series of 10-story buildings were to be constructed underneath the deck for waiting areas, ticket offices, and small businesses. The airport wouldn't just accommodate air travel, and plans included piers for ships from the Hudson River, as well as roads and railways beneath the platform. The main motivation for this plan was to reduce travel time. In the 1940s, New York already had problems with traffic congestion, and with all of its major airports outside of Manhattan reaching these transit points was often difficult. 
A Midtown airport would have erased the need for travelers to drive to Newark LaGuardia or JFK. If built, the airport would have changed New York forever. Some of the skyscrapers seen today lay in this area, for example, Hudson Yards and wouldn't exist today, but also the surrounding area would have been developed quite differently. While this idea looks crazy, there are obvious reasons why this plan didn't turn into reality. First of all, an airport in the middle of the world's busiest city would be a nightmare for the residents. This airport was designed to accommodate 68 flights an hour, so people would essentially deal with aircraft noise every minute of the day. Overall, it's obvious that building an airport 70 meters above New York with surrounding skyscrapers and residents wasn't going to happen. So while there was excitement for this unparalleled airport, the ambitious plans remained limited to the newspapers. In addition, the traffic in New York was a major problem already, and with people flooding to Midtown for their flights, it would add another congestion headache to the city's planners. But even if they got approval, it would present major engineering challenges. Also acquiring the land for the project, clearing up the existing structures in a 144-block radius, and then rebuilding the whole area with an airport on top would probably make it the largest and most complicated mega-project in New York's history. Overall, it's obvious that building an airport 70 meters above New York with surrounding skyscrapers and residents wasn't going to happen. So while there was excitement for this unparalleled airport, the ambitious plans remained limited to the newspapers. Portman Bridge, Vancouver, BC Portman Bridge is a 10-lane cable-stayed viaduct spanning the Fraser River just east of Vancouver. It opened to traffic in 2012 after more than five years of construction. It replaced an arch bridge that was still structurally sound but could not handle increasing traffic demands. At two kilometers long with a 470-meter-long main span and 52-meter-wide deck, the Portman Bridge is one of the longest cable-stayed bridges in North America and one of the widest bridges in the world. The Portman Bridge slash Highway 1 project included the 10-lane Signature Bridge, the South Approach in Surrey and the North Approach in Coquitlam. A barrier-separated, 3-meter-wide bicycle pedestrian path was included on the east side of the crossing, creating a new connection across the Fraser River for bicyclists and pedestrians. Thailand's bridge design features two dramatic single-mass concrete towers which rise 160 meters over the river and house anchorages for the four planes of cables. The state cable system incorporates 288 cables that would extend about 45 kilometers if laid end-to-end. -end. The superstructure consists of two five-lane decks, separated by a 10-meter median where the central pylons are located. Each roadway is supported by two planes of state cables. The structures for the 820-meter-long northern approach and the 360-meter-long southern approach each consist of three precast concrete segmental box girders. Due to the bridge's location and high seismic region, Thailand conducted rigorous seismic engineering analysis and design for the project. The bridge is founded in deep alluvium soils on 1.82-meter diameter steel piles offshore and 2.4-meter diameter concrete shafts onshore. Foundations were all governed by seismic loads. Marmaray Tunnel, Turkey the Marmaray Tunnel is a 13.5 kilometers, 8.4 miles long undersea railway tunnel in Istanbul, Turkey, beneath the Bosporus Strait, linking Kazlishezm, Zeton Bernu in Europe with Erilixismesi in Asia. The tunnel consists of two single track tunnels with three underground railway stations, Yenikapi, Circusi, and Djeskdar. The fast metro line will enable 40 minute travel from Insurli to Sepletezm and a 14-minute journey by car from Hazel Crossroads to the Emrini Hamlet Crossroad. The tunnel, which is estimated to cost $3.5 billion, was introduced by Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu and Transportation, Maritime and Communication Minister Lutfi Elvin. The project is included in the 2023 transportation projection in order to find a solution to Istanbul's busy traffic. This project combined the fast metro tunnel project, which will start from Bakirkwi and Surli on the E5 axis and reach Sutlihezm, similar to the Marmaray and the Highway Tunnel, with two X2 lines similar to the Eurasia Tunnel located on the TEM Highway axis in order to decrease the traffic on the Fedi Sultan Mehmet Bridge, a second bridge on the Bosporus. Instead of separate tunnels, one tunnel will be built for both the Metro and Dual Highway Bosporus crossing. The tunnel will enable faster and cheaper transportation between the two sides of Istanbul. It will integrate nine different urban train systems with a fast metro track, which is used approximately by 6.5 million passengers on a daily basis. It will also enable easier and faster connections to ring roads, thus connecting all main arterial roads. The diameter of the tunnel will be 16.8 meters and will be built 110 meters from the sea surface. The depth of the sea where it crosses the Bosporus will be 60 to 65 meters and the length of the part that will contain both the metro and the highway shall be 6.5 kilometers. So that's it. Please like, share, and comment your thoughts below if you like this video.
Remember to subscribe to see our next video. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.